There's no way of knowing when or where the next interesting ancient artifact might be discovered. There might be one waiting to be found under your feet right now, or perhaps beneath the nearest car park. Maybe it's down the back of the sofa or hidden in an attic. Whenever or wherever it turns up, we hope it's as intriguing as the artifacts you're about to see in this video. A 16th century Spanish cathedral in Salamanca became the center of speculation all around the world when a photograph surfaced and went viral on social media, revealing what appeared to be a modern astronaut carved on its facade. This intriguing piece of evidence seemed to support the concept of ancient aliens, as popularized by Eric von Daniken in his book Chariots of the Gods. However, the truth behind the carving is not extraterrestrial at all. The cathedral, Catedral Nueva, was constructed between 1513 and 1733, but the astronaut carving was not part of the original design. During a restoration project in 1992, artist Geronimo Garcia decided to add a personal touch to the work by creating modern sculptures, including the astronaut. It symbolized the 20th century milestone of spaceflight and landing on the moon, thus debunking the notion that it was evidence of ancient encounters with aliens. While entertaining, the idea of ancient astronaut theory often has more plausible explanations, leaving the astronaut carving as a creative product of the 20th century. Or at least, unless someone comes up with compelling proof that they were around thousands of years ago. As is the case with many unexplained artifacts, the authenticity of the so-called Newberry Tablet is debated. If we're to believe the story behind the object, it was discovered by two lumberjacks as they cleared land for a farmer in the town of Newberry, Michigan, USA in 1896. During their work, they found two clay figures and a clay tablet. The figures were nondescript but the intricately designed tablet featured 140 characters carved into a grid pattern. The workers and landowner consulted experts at both the University of Michigan and the Smithsonian, but nobody could recognize the characters, and so the artifact was dismissed as a hoax. In more recent times, experts have noted similarities between the characters and the written language of the ancient Minoans. Any such connection ought to be impossible because the Minoans lived on the Greek island of Crete and disappeared from history around 3,100 years ago. It's impossible to study the Newberry tablet now because it's eroded and crumbled away badly since its discovery. What's left of it is displayed at the Fort de Baud Museum in St. Ignace, but it's in such poor condition that it's no longer possible to read any of the characters. There exists a mysterious Assyrian stela carrying with it a centuries-old curse. In 800 BCE, an unknown author inscribed dire consequences upon it for anyone who dared to discard the image of the god Salmanu from this remarkable artifact. This stela, dating back to the reign of King Adad-Nirari III, was later split into two halves, one finding its place in the British Museum and the other making its way to Bonham's auction house. News broke in 2014 that the British Museum, surprisingly, chose not to acquire the second half of this rare piece, as they didn't want to reunite it and risk activating the curse. Discovered in Syria in 1879, the British Museum's portion showcased the king's head, standing tall in basalt, symbolizing his military achievement. The lower fragment, expected to fetch a fortune at auction, was withdrawn amid suspicions of its illegal removal from Syria. Standing united, the stele would reach a height of over six feet, depicting King Adad-Nirari III, ruler between 810 BCE and 783 BCE, alongside sacred symbols representing Assyrian power. Cuneiform inscriptions called for the protection of the sacred site and cursed anyone attempting to move the stele. Though once a symbol of Assyrian power, this ancient relic now finds itself entangled in a modern dispute of provenance. Deep in Kansas, USA, amateur historian Dean Jeffries has a theory that could rewrite the history books. 
He claims that ancient European sun worshippers arrived in Kansas around the year 500, more than a thousand years before Columbus's journey. The evidence? The mysterious Beverly Mystery Stone, discovered in a Lincoln County field 80 years ago. Jeffries translated its 16-symbol inscription as Gaelic Punic, an ancient language from the Iberian Peninsula, marking the grave of a fallen comrade. This revelation challenges the belief that Columbus's voyage marked the first European discovery of the New World, although that belief has already been shattered by the fact that the Vikings had him beaten by several centuries. While some are skeptical due to the stone's surprisingly pristine condition, it has been displayed in the Kine House Museum since 1993, igniting heated debates among historians. If Jeffrey's theory holds true, our understanding of early exploration would need a major update, placing ancient Europeans in the heartland long before Columbus's epic journey. A historical mystery unfolds as the Beverly Stone continues to perplex and intrigue, leaving us to wonder what secrets it holds about Kansas's past. Behold, the mighty Pacific god Aa, an inspiring Polynesian sculpture that has enchanted poets, artists, and people of Polynesia for centuries. This wooden figure holds a profound secret. It was designed to cradle the skull and bones of a revered ancestor, carrying the treasures within. A relic from the island of Rurutu, the figure features 30 small anthropomorphic forms scattered across its body, symbolizing fertility and the power to create life. An important and sacred deity, Aa was presented to British evangelical missionaries in 1821 as a symbol of the islanders' embrace of Christianity. Among its admirers were the famous sculptor Henry Moore and Pablo Picasso, both entranced by its allure. A poem penned by poet William Empson immortalized its beauty, and even today it continues to inspire countless souls. Recently, researchers unraveled more mysteries about Aa. Samples of its sandalwood composition revealed that it dates back to possibly 1505, making it even more ancient and remarkable than previously believed. The hollow back of the sculpture was meant to hold the cherished remains of an ancestor, wrapped in sacred materials like bark cloth, feathers, and human hair. When it was opened recently, a tiny red feather, hidden for two centuries, emerged from obscurity. In late 2014, archaeologists working in the city of Neapaphos in Cyprus came across a small amulet. Finding an amulet is nothing to write home about, but the inscription on the amulet got many in the archaeological community excited, and some of them are still talking about it and debating its meaning to this day. The text is 59 letters long and reads the same backwards as it does forward. At 1,500 years old, that makes it one of the earliest known examples of a palindrome. Translated into English, the inscription reads, Lawe is the bearer of the secret name. The Lion of Ray is secure in his shrine. The reverse of the amulet is decorated with tiny images, including one of a bandaged mummy, suggesting that the creator was familiar with ancient Egyptian culture and burial rites. The general purpose of amulets at the time this one was created was to magically protect their wearers from harm or misfortune. That means that the inscription is probably a spell or a mantra, although the meaning of the precise details is lost to time. Human-powered flight is an invention of the 20th century, or at least that's what we've always been taught to believe. It appears that the truth might be far harder to swallow. Welcome to the concept of Vimanas, ancient Indian chariots that allegedly rose into the sky, spewing fire and water as they went. It would be easy to write them off as an ancient hoax if references to them didn't appear in so many texts written independently of each other. They're mentioned by name in both Hindi and Sanskrit texts that date back 3,500 years. The most detailed description of them comes from the Veda, which says the interior of the flying vessels contained 12 pillars, a wheel, a control panel, and 300 articulated pivot points. 
Another text, known as the Ramayana, explains that ownership of Vimanas was limited to the ruling class, which is corroborated by the Mahabharata texts. There's no direct evidence that one single Vimana ever existed. But why did so many ancient writers speak of them like they'd seen them with their own eyes if that's the case? For our next discovery, we travel to the capital city of Glasgow on the Scottish mainland. That's where you'll find the stunning Govan Old Church, and inside the church, the Govan Stones. These medieval carved rocks are considered to be Scotland's greatest Viking Age treasures. There are 31 of them in total, all of which were carved between the 9th and 11th centuries. The precise meaning of the elaborate designs etched onto their surface is unknown, but they're thought to be relics of the ancient kingdom of Strathclyde. Although the stones are referred to collectively, they differ in design and function quite significantly. Five of them are hogback stones, so called because they're shaped to look like the backs of wild hogs or boars. One of them is actually a stone sarcophagus. Legend has it that the bones of King Constantine were once contained in the sarcophagus, although there is no solid evidence to back up that claim. Incredibly, a 14-year-old school student located three previously unnoticed stones in the Govan area in March 2019, and experts believe they might qualify to become part of the same collection. When you're bored at home and seeking entertainment, you might decide to play a board game. That board game probably comes with a die. Whenever you roll a die, you're taking part in one of the oldest forms of entertainment known to humanity. We know that because of the existence of ancient artifacts like this Egyptian D20 die. This elaborately carved and decorated die dates back to the Ptolemaic period in Egypt, somewhere around 2,200 years ago. Considering the fact that it's extremely old, and it was presumably rolled and played with a lot when it was new, it's in stunningly good condition. Perhaps that's down to the fact that it's made from serpentine. Sadly, we'll probably never know what type of game this was used to play, but the symbols on the sides are letters of the Greek alphabet. Some of them are worn away, but Epsilon, Theta, and Eta can all be seen clearly. Dice were often used in divination rituals in the ancient world, which might explain its purpose, but perhaps the Egyptians had their very own version of Dungeons & Dragons. Depictions of the female form are among the oldest and most repeated forms of art known to humankind. Humans have been attempting to replicate female beauty with paint, clay, and stone for almost as long as they've been able to manipulate tools, and these sculptures from a mine in France illustrate that point perfectly. The statues are known as the Venus figurines, and over 15 of them have been found so far. The most recent of them came to light in November 2014, and is believed to have been carved around 23,000 years ago, during the Paleolithic era. As you can see from these images, the statues focus only on the female torso. There are no heads or faces, and in some cases there are no limbs either. That's led some experts to classify them as fertility totems, but there may be another explanation. The women of the time wouldn't have had access to mirrors, and so wouldn't have known what their own faces looked like. It's possible that these statues, crude as they might be, are early examples of self-portraits made from limestone. Let's check out the Michigan relics. These artifacts are sometimes also called the Scotford Frauds, which tells you a lot about how the archaeological community feels about them. If we take the claims at face value, the relics were found during the 19th century and demonstrate that there was once a settlement full of people from the Near or Middle East living close to Michigan, USA in the years prior to the arrival of Christopher Columbus. We know that Columbus was far from the first non-native person to arrive in America, but this claim seems outrageous. The person who claimed to have found the objects was Michigan's own James O. Scottford, who continued to swear that his artifacts were genuine even when on his deathbed. Some prominent Mormons have connected the artifacts to their religion, and say they serve as proof of the tales told in the Book of Mormon. 
Professional archaeologists say that the supposed hieroglyphs printed on the many cups, vases, and other items are nonsensical, and they bear trace evidence of the 19th century tools and materials to make them. Many of us played with toy cars when we were growing up. Our parents probably played with toy cars too, and so did our grandparents. It would be a little stranger to hear that children were playing with toy cars 5,000 years ago because the car hadn't been invented yet. Nevertheless, they were. This tiny, ornate toy chariot made from earthenware was found in Sogmatar, Turkey in 2017. Based on its size, it's likely that it was intended as a child's toy, and as such, it's easily the oldest toy car ever found. It might even be the oldest toy of any kind ever discovered. That honor used to belong to a 4,000-year-old baby rattle discovered in Coltepe, Kayseri in 2014. But this is 1,000 years older. It would have been able to roll along flat surfaces with no problem, and it was most likely made for the child of an aristocrat, a senior politician, or possibly even a monarch. Findings like this remind us that our ancient ancestors may have been more like us than we often imagine. Whether it's now, thousands of years ago, or thousands of years in the future, children will always need toys to play with. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.